Hey, Brandon Allen here at Allen Music in downtown Paducah, and we're starting a new series called Very Important Musicians. And we've been in business since 1965, and so um, it's because of, number one, a lot of prayer from my mom sitting in that office back there, uh, a lot of hard work from my dad and my grandmother, and um, a lot of great customers and friends like Josh Williams here. So Josh is from Benton, about 25 minutes uh, from our shop, and uh, we were fortunate enough to get to uh, just know him as a kid growing up in uh, our town and in the music industry, and just kind of got to see him blossom into this, uh, well, three-time IBMA uh, Guitar Player of the Year, uh, 2008, 2009, 2010, back to back to back. That's right. And one of the things I love about that is one of your, um, I guess, uh, like maybe role models in the industry, Tony Rice, mm -hmm. um, yeah. who you got to play with. I did. Right? I, I spent about five years on the road with Tony, yeah. playing mandolin for him. Oh, amazing. I would have played washboard for right? him, you know, <laughs> you know, anything he wanted. Yeah. So, but the cool thing is Tony Rice was uh, one of your, you know, childhood idols, right? Absolutely. He was the 2007 IBMA Guitar Player of the Year. And then Josh took that title <laughs> from him in 2008. Oh and man, and Tony was in the audience in no 2008. Kidding. Yes, <laughs> that was very uh, unnerving. Uh, yeah, know, I bet. That was one of the very few times he could have actually been there in person and accepted the award. Right. And, and so I got he it. didn't know, and you didn't know. No, like, no, that we had no clue. But he even told me before the show, though. He said that I hope they give it to you. I've got a lot of money riding on you. Oh really? <laughs> That's cool. So, so, um, so like, if you know anything about bluegrass, I mean, Tony Rice has written book after book after book, right? And album after album after album. And so he's somebody that that everybody in the bluegrass industry knows. Josh was looked up to him as a kid, fortunate enough to tour with him for five years, and then took that title in 2008 <laughs> and kept that title for 2009 and 2010. So um, I want uh, Josh to just kind of introduce himself and um, tell a little bit about, you know, just growing up in Paducah and what inspired you to be yeah. um, uh, a bluegrass guitarist. Well, I, I uh, Josh Williams grew up in uh, Benton, Kentucky, and uh, I was born in Murray, but I was raised in Benton and uh, grew up coming to Allen Music uh, ever since I was really small. My dad was always into music of some sort and always dealing with some kind of an instrument. He always wanted some kind of an instrument. And, uh, you know, he would come in and he and Boyce would, you know, just Haggle. talk for hours yeah. and all this stuff, you know. And Wheeling and dealing. That's right, that's right. <laughs> but, you know, I, uh, I loved those days of being able to do that with my dad, you know. Uh, and uh, I started really taking a notion to music that I wanted to play I was uh, I was about five, and my grandmother, my dad's mom, we called her Granny. Mm -hmm. She played the ukulele, mm -hmm. and she played all these little cute little funny songs and right. stuff. Well, one day she had her ukulele out because I would always ask her to play it for me, you know. And she'd sing the same songs every day, but who cares, you right. know? And uh, anyway, one day i decided because we had a little bitty one over at the house yeah. and she lived right next door so i just had a path between the houses yeah. you know and um i decided to go get that little ukulele and i brought it in and and she tuned it got it to where it was the same tuning as hers and i watched her make the chords and stuff she showed me how to make them but i watched her hand and whatnot yeah and i learned to play right then and there wow and at five years old, at five years old on the yeah. ukulele and that's when I was like, oh my gosh, I can do this. Yeah, you, you can know? make music. Yeah. So dad started trying to show me some guitar chords. And of course the guitar was the size of me, you know, so yeah. it was difficult. But if you notice back here on this wall, there's a there's an old guitar, an old, old Martin 017. This is what my dad had for years and years. He had a 1939. Uh, this one's a 34, but he had a 1939 uh, 017 Martin that uh, he literally ruined the value of just so I could play it because I was small. You know, I was 
10 years old or something when he did that. So it was a lot more comfortable than trying to play a right. big dreadnought, you know, like yeah. this one. And I got to where I could play, I, I could play the one song that he played, which was Ruben. You know, yeah. he could play that <laughs> and he could play a little bit of the Wild Wolf Flower and I'd learned that. And uh, it just hadn't like, my fire was sparked, but it wasn't blazing yet. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I, uh, I was uh, at home one day, my mom was gone doing something. So it was just me and dad. She and my brother were out somewhere. I mean, it was just me and dad and Hee Haw was on TV. Yeah. And all of a sudden there came a, uh, uh, a song and it was Mike Snyder and uh, Ronnie Stoneman and they were doing a duet, a banjo duet type of thing. Mm -hmm. And it mesmerized me, yeah. absolutely mesmerized me. So I, I, poor dad at this time was in the shower and I ran in there just screaming, dad, come <laughs> quick, dad, come quick. <laughs> Scared him to death, you know. And he, he even said, I thought the house was on fire, right. you know. But um, when he came out, uh, he saw me just like that far from the television, you know, just, yeah. just watching and he said, what are you doing? And I said, that's what I want to play. Wow. And so I started taking banjo lessons from Scotty Henson, there yep, in Benton, yep, who's a local, local hero, you know, and uh, yep. uh, well, I miss him. He passed yeah. away back in uh, 17, but uh, uh, sure do miss him. But he, uh, he, he gave me banjo lessons for three years. And then he'd always started telling people Then he started teaching me. You know, yeah. so, but I, I would still, we still kept our, my Tuesday, uh, 11, seven o'clock, yep. still kept it. And I just would go over there and we just hang out or and pick jam. or, yeah, yeah, just do whatever. And I took one guitar lesson from him and it was only to learn a solo that he played at the Kentucky Opry. Whenever Clayton Campbell would play, uh, Ashokan Farewell. Right, yeah. He showed me his solo on that. Okay. And, and I thought that was the prettiest solo I'd ever heard. So he showed yeah. me that. That's the only uh, uh, instrument, or other instrument that I've ever had a lesson on. Wow. You know, so the rest of it. So one guitar lesson. Yes. Wow. <laughs> one guitar lesson. But I was already playing by that point. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. I could already kind of play a guitar. Yeah. You know? So um, really, <clears throat> other than the three years of banjo from Scotty, self-taught on the guitar absolutely you know, yeah. all the way up to you just surrounded yourself with the with music absolutely from day one <laughs> and, and good musicians mm -hmm. obviously my friend at home that i grew up with uh he's now a judge there in marshall county jamie jameson oh yeah he uh he got when we were young he was about 16 and i was about 12 or maybe it was even younger than that he might have been like 14 and i was uh Eight or something but anyway mm -hmm. um, we uh, sat in his living room he had gotten an intimate lesson with Tony Rice on yeah. homespun yeah I used to sell yeah. those mm -hmm. some, some of them like pancakes. VHS yeah. tape that big <laughs> yeah. and uh, <laughs> for all you young kids right. don't know what that is <laughs> it played in a thing called a VCR right <laughs> anyway um, so he got that and it came with a tablature book okay mm -hmm. Yep. And he would sit there, we, he'd have it on, we'd, I'd have one of his old guitars and he'd have the one that he played all the time. Right. And he'd be reading that tablature, but I'd be watching him and watching the TV, watching what Tony did. Right. And that's how I learned that stuff. You know, Amazing. I mean, I, that's, that was the when I saw Tony the first time. Right. Was on that video. Yeah. And that's when I decided that is yeah. the coolest guy I've ever seen. Yeah. And I want to do that. That's funny. I actually, I think I've got one of those VHS of him up in the attic. Oh, that's that, awesome. That, Cause when we, we used to sell them like crazy, I couldn't keep them on the shelf. And then all of a sudden it transitioned to the CD set. And I had that VHS that just sat there and sat there cause mm -hmm. nobody had VCR anymore. I know, yeah. So I ended up putting it in the attic. I still think I've got it back Oh up man, there. that's awesome. So that's mm -hmm. funny. So, and then, cra crazily, like, at what point did you say, Tony Rice, I'm going to play in your band someday? <laughs> you know? No, you know, I, uh, so I got to where I was kind of, I met Tony in, gosh, tw uh, 2001, maybe, something like that, and um, 
So 2001, you, what were you, 20? Yeah, yeah, I was, yeah, 20. Barely, barely 20? I was 20, 20. Yeah, yeah, so I, I'm backstage at IBMA, and I'm, you know, I just done like a little segment. Anyway, I saw him backstage, and I had already befriended his daughter, you know, and stuff, and she said, come on over here, he, he wants to meet you. Wow. And uh, I went over and I talked to him, of course, and by that point, I had already played a little bit with J.D. Crow and stuff, and, and yeah. he was, you know, that's where he got his start yeah. through J.D. And uh, he was just he was just a prince of a guy, man. You know, wow. I mean, uh, he uh, I ended up hanging out with him a little bit longer later on in the evening, mm -hmm. but um, it was we were in Virginia. I'd already started with Rhonda. I was on the road oh, with her, okay. and uh, I carried uh, one of my mandolins as well as my guitar, you know? Mm -hmm. And that's Rhonda Vincent in the race. Yes, Rhonda Vincent. If you guys don't know who they are, look them up. Yeah, we won a Grammy in 2017, so. Yeah, yeah, you played uh, how many years with her? About, uh, collectively, I think it was about 10 or 11. Okay, yeah. So, so a big portion of your, your touring career yeah, was yeah. with Rhonda Vincent. The, the biggest, okay. the biggest cool. part. And, uh, but anyway, um, we were playing on stage and she said, hey, Tony's backstage, you think we could get him up here? And I said, you know, let's ask him. You right. know? So I asked him and he, he already had his guitar on and was, was ready to, you know, just uh, come on up. And he, and he ended up coming up. So when he did, I just laid my guitar down because it's covered. Right? right, right. So I got <laughs> the respectable. Yes, respectable I picked up the mandolin. Yeah. And we did a couple of songs like that. Yeah. And ever since that moment, he was just, you know, hey, uh, need a mandolin player sometime you no know it's like hey dude you just call me right. anytime i will be there <laughs> so uh i ended up then i got a couple of chances to play mandolin with uh the uh, peter rowan tony rice quartet thing that he was doing yep so that made it even more fun because it was different material you know right. and, and you know uh uh getting to stretch out even more you know yeah. so from that moment on tony was like uh he said again, I might might use you if you if that's okay, you know, anytime, yeah. you know. Yeah. And then one day my cell phone rang and I looked down and it said Tony Rice. So Unbelievable. So when he <laughs> called he, he asked if I was free on a date and I basically just told him I was like, Man, it don't matter. Right. <laughs> I'll be there. I will be free <laughs> yes. anytime. If you I'm call. not free, I will make it so, you know. That's so, crazy. But yeah, it was just it so was you a got dream to tour him tour with him mm -hmm. for Five years, you said? Mm -hmm. Yeah, just shy of it. It was just shy of five That's years. That's amazing. And you got, so what portion of it, because he recently passed away mm -hmm. as well, right? Yeah, yeah. So what year did he pass away and like what year did it, it was, he was here? He passed away on Christmas Day of 2020. Wow. That's amazing. Yeah. And so, but you got to spend five years with him. What years were those approximately? Uh, 2008 to 2013. Okay. That's amazing. And mandolin with him, mm -hmm. and now with Rhonda, you played a little bit of everything, or yeah, yeah, mostly, um, mostly guitar and mandolin. Okay, all so. right. So, um, curiously, when you played with Tony, what kind of mandolin did you play? I had a Gilchrist at that time. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I was playing that. I also had a, a, a Gibson for a while too that uh, that Gibson had given me, and I was playing that. A lot. I got to where I was really used to playing that. Yeah. It didn't have the tone that that Gilchrist had, you know. So I always took the Gilchrist with Tony. So I have a good friend, really he was a great friend of Dad's, um, and I was just kind of tag along. Um, you, you'll know him, but out of respect, I won't say his name um, for the video, but I have one of his mandolins in the back that I'll, I'll get Andrew to go get mm -hmm. and maybe let you strum it a time or two. Yes. It's... um. It's like a it's a like a nineteen ten or eleven, um, and uh, it's an F style old Gibson. Wow. Andrew Andrew knows he's already going to get it to, to show it to you. But um, so when you were with Rhonda, um, what what acoustic did you play? I started off playing a Kendrick, which was made by Neil Kendrick over in Frenchburg, Kentucky. And he custom made that yes. for you to your yes. specs. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So of course, grew up playing your dad's vintage 1939-017. Sure I did. mean, like, and then most kids grow up the, their first guitars a Johnson right, or a, right. I, a I got Jasmine. Lucky. I got lucky. Uh, you started on a 1939-017 Martin. I got lucky. I got lucky. <laughs> and then 
one day, Dad decided that he and I were going to go to Paducah and go to Allen Music. Allen Music. And he went in there and he started haggling back and forth yep. with your dad, voice, <laughs> and and we left there with a uh, HD twenty eight. Amazing. And cool. I ended up playing that most of the time. No you know, by that point, I was like probably fourteen or fifteen. Yeah. So I'd grown to where I could reach yeah. around that one. But so Josh Williams' first Martin came from my dad. HD 28 here at Alley Music. That's a fun story. And so uh, <laughs> when, back when he was like 14. Mm -hmm. So um, and by the way, this is a Martin D45. Um, thought I'd ask Josh to just play a riff or two on this thing. This just came in, and uh, we did an unboxing of this guitar earlier today. Um, that we've been waiting on this guitar for like a year and a half. It's a D45, and I had been saving it for a couple days because I wanted Josh to be here when we opened it out of the box from scratch and him be the first one to strum it because uh, <laughs> it's a $9,699 guitar and I thought, I mean, who better to break this thing in than Josh, so. That's a good one. You care to play a tune on it? Yeah, I'll play something. <clears throat> hey, before you start this song though, so you were just telling me earlier, we were talking before the, um, the video started, you would play 300 dates a year Roughly, yep. in the, the when prime I first of your joined Rhonda, yeah. career, and so um, that's I mean, I can't imagine <laughs> it was living off the bus, yeah. the suitcase, you know. Yeah, so I've been telling Josh he needs to write a book about that, <laughs> you know, from getting to play with Rhonda, getting to play with Tony, uh, yeah. JD, yeah, right, yeah, JD Crow, yeah. And so, I mean, there's not too many people that have had a, a really cool career like this, <laughs> um, but um. So, but yeah, we're gonna, he's gonna play a tune for us here. So I'm a I'm a blessed man. What can I say? Amen. I mean, I've just, Amen. I've gotten some really cool opportunities. Before, uh, when we had mentioned this about the 017, yeah, um, my dad basically ruined the value of that when I was a kid, so I could play one. He put D28 tuners on it and got it set up to where I could basically play it all the time. Yeah. And anyway, when we got older, or when I got older, he ended up selling that I he needed you know we needed extra money so he sold that and another guitar and uh, um, we ended up uh, buying a, it was a Martin D19 you oh, remember wow. those I mean that there weren't many made no there weren't I think they only made them from like seven, 77 and 78 or something yeah. like that but they had uh, Skaggs was pushing them oh know? okay so they had Skaggs behind those yeah but um, anyway when I was uh, with Rhonda I was, money was great, you know, I was making really good money, and yeah. I found a guy that had uh, a 1931. Wow. Dad had a 39, but this is a 31, yeah. and it was in great condition. And uh, I asked him how much he wanted for it, and I just, I just bought it, you know, yeah. and I gave it to Dad for Christmas. Yeah. So I said, I said, you ruined your guitar for me. Yeah. I want to have, give you this guitar for you. That's you crazy, know? and so, Real quick, um, you good on you good on time there? And so, real quick, let's go ahead and play the L17. Okay. We just traded for this guitar. I had no idea of the cool story about the L17 with Josh growing up with his dad. And so, uh, we just traded for this. And so that's just that's the way God works. Just put a, a fun little touch on our uh, very important musician series video. So this is 1934. We have our, we, we're Martin Certified uh, Warranty Service Center here for our region. And Dave is our luthier and he's um, got his certificate from Martin to build guitars, rebuild guitars, repair guitars. When we got this in, that bridge was shaved down um, because no one, whoever had it before, didn't know how to reset the neck. Dave had to reset the neck and he had to carve out a, um, a new bridge out of uh, Brazilian rosewood, a piece that he had from long ago, and so, um, and, and matter of fact, Josh, you said you didn't even yeah, I didn't realize it was realize not it was original. replacement yeah yeah so he did uh, great yeah he replicated it well. Made of sand, made of 
sand In the wink of an eye my soul is turning In your hand, in your hand Are you going away with no word of farewell? Will there be not a trace left behind? I could have loved you better than me to be unkind. You know that was the last thing on my mind. Guitar player of the year, and uh, but beautiful voice, man. Oh, thanks, man. So, thanks and uh, don't let me forget. So, uh, Josh Williams, modern day man. Um, you can get these down here at Allen Music. Probably get them on your website, maybe. Or you know, my website. I don't even know if it's still up anymore. Really? <laughs> I have to check on that. I would just come down exclusively. <laughs> yeah, just, here at Allen Music. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, amazing album. Uh, this one you did back in 2016. Or yeah, yeah, something like that. 2016. Yeah, yeah. And JD Crow. Okay. Produced, produced this, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, who it's else? got that flair on it. Yeah. It's got that 70s country, bluegrass yeah. fusion type of thing. Yeah. It's really cool, man. But, you know, I love your voice. It's got an incredible, you got an incredible range. Really? You know, you can hit those high notes, but you got that bassy, that bassy <laughs> with it too, so, yeah. which yeah. is great. Well, thank you. So, um, you were born for this, I guess, right? I guess. So. That's all I've ever done, you know? <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, don't forget, Modern Day Man, Josh Williams. Amazing album. Hey, who else played on this with you? Uh, let's you, see. You could there have played is, all the instruments yourself, obviously. You know, uh, no, I didn't on this particular one. On my last record, there was an instrumental that I did, and I played everything but yeah. bass on it. Uh, oh, and fiddle. I ended up adding uh, Stuart Duncan on the fiddle. But uh, um, on this one, no, it wasn't the case. I, uh, uh, let's see, I had Dave Racine was our drummer uh, from Nashville. Uh, the famous Doug Jernigan played steel yep. on there. Uh, uh, Kelly Back was an electric guitar player on a couple of tunes. Um, <clears throat> let's see, it was uh, myself and uh, Nick Keane, who was my mandolin player at the time when we were recording that. He was playing some on it. Sierra Hull's playing on it. And the great Sam Bush was wow. on there too. So. Yeah. Yeah, it was uh and Jason McKendry from from right here in oh, this yeah. area, he's playing most of the banjo on okay, it. Okay. Yeah. In fact, a lot of that he got to play Crow's old 75. You're a kid. Mm -mm. No, he loved it. Wow. So he was like a kid in a candy store. Yeah. And Crow just loved it, you know. He yeah. uh, he was Crow was so close to me. Like we, we I I met him when I was 10 years old and I've known him that long and he was like family. He really was like family to yeah. us because for the first three years of my oldest son, Weldon, of his life, yeah. he, he thought Crow was his grandpa. No kidding. Yeah, I mean, that's how often he saw him. That's and, amazing. And so he would just toddle over to him, and Crow would just pick yeah. him up and sit down, and he, two of them would just start producing. Yeah. You know? <laughs> well, and I mean, that's probably partly a testament to your personality. You know, I mean, you get along with everybody you ever meet. I try um, to, yeah. It, and it's a per, it's a testimony to your, your gifts and talents, too. I mean, you you worked your tail off to be, you know, the best at what you do, and people respect that, right? I mean, like, you've earned the respect of Tony Rice and J.D. Crow and, and all these, these folks. So, and I've noticed, like, the bluegrass world, they're genuinely nice people for the most part. Yeah, they're, you know? they're your down-home normal folks. Yeah, right? um, was it uh, Janae? <clears throat> Yeah, Janae Fleener. Fleener. You know, she, she played a gig over here at Carson Center, and she came in, I told you the other mm -hmm. day, and she hung out for like an hour and played some fiddle and just hung out and laughed and talked. That's and, awesome, yeah. And the, the, the tall guy. Ben uh, Isaacs. Yeah, Ben Isaacs. <laughs> he was a, a clown, man, like just, just goofing around. But they took pictures with us, and they hung out. It was like we were just having like a, 
you know, a backyard grill out with buddies or something, you know, and it was the first time I'd ever met them. They're great folks. Yeah. They're great folks. So, uh, you got enough roll there to show this mandolin? If we, if we run out, we'll just cut into part two. <laughs> So since Manlin's also one of your, which is crazy, guitar player of the year, never had but one guitar lesson, self-taught, and uh, Manlin was your, you said your primary instrument with Rhonda, right? Uh, well, guitar was my prim primary instrument with Rhonda. But oh, the first time with, with Tony. With the first with time, yes, Manolin with Tony. Yeah. Uh, the first time I ever played with Rhonda, though, I was actually her fiddle player. I was the no first. No kidding. I was her first fiddle player <laughs> that she ever hired for her band. You're kidding me. Oh my gosh, that's good stuff. This is cool. Yeah. I'll have to put it in the edit notes down the, down at the bottom under this video, but I think this is like a 1910 or 1911 or something. Like a F4 or something. I can't remember. I believe it is F4. F4, yeah. You know uh, Josh Coffee. He came over and played it one day and uh, wanted to buy it, but um, I said, man, I don't think I can like, I don't think I can part with it. Oh, that's so cool. How cool, man. What do you think? I love it. Has it got potential? Oh my gosh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it, that, I guarantee it's still in there. Yep. And all it's got to do is just be played and make it come out. Right. right. Yeah. Well, it's pretty. Original tuners, too. Looks like. Could be. Yeah, I think it is, actually. If it's not, they're, whoever put them on, they're, they're right. Yeah. So. But that was a family gift from, from some close friends of dad's to, to our family, and I was honored to get to receive it. So. Cool, man. So what's your favorite instrument? Probably guitar, guitar, honestly, at this point. I have fun playing them all. You know, yeah. anything that I have in my hands, I can have a good time with. But I just, I, I feel like I'm more comfortable with the guitar. Yeah. Because that's what I've played more at yeah. this point in my life. Um, and I'm usually singing, you know. Right. So yeah. having the guitar makes it a lot easier. You know, yeah. I just don't have to worry about it near as much. Yeah. Uh, it's hard to sing and play banjo. I never did get very really? good at that. Yeah. <laughs> That's kind of like singing and playing the drums. Yeah, uh, yeah. You don't see too many. Or guys singing and do. playing the bass. I can't do that. Right. I cannot. Yeah. I've tried. And Only I cannot uh, do it. Sting. Yes. Uh, he, he could do it, right? Oh my gosh. So hey, to close this out, you, you got one more song you want to play real quick sure, on the D45. Sure. Play that, yeah. We got we got to hear your voice one more time <clears throat> before we close out. Okay. down in the Southland Twenty some odd years ago I ran away for the first time railroad track Well, you may not like my appearance and you may not like my song You may not like the way I talk But you like the way I'm gone I'm a freeborn man Lord, my home's on my back I know every inch of my way Every foot 
back road, every mile of railroad track. That's amazing. Well, That's great guitar out there, man. Josh, thank Dude. you so much, man. Thank you, Brandon. Thanks for being here. Thanks for being here pretty much your whole life and my whole yeah, life. Yeah, man. So um, we're honored, grateful that, that you're here today and that you've always been here. So, um, hey, guys, thanks for joining us for this uh, really special opportunity we got to do uh, today with Josh. Um, so um, hopefully you'll uh, enjoy the video, like and subscribe, come down to 215 Kentucky Avenue here at Allen Music and uh, join us, hang out with us, play a D45, play a 1934-017, play a 1911-F4 uh, Gibson mandolin and uh, have some fun with us. Um, stay in tune with Allen Music, God bless you and good night.